Hi everyone. Hi. I'm Mike. I'm a pretty new member here. He's got, um, he's got a shirt, so you know he's talking. I've got a shirt. Guess what I'm about. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. No surprise. I'm here to show off my Sharp X6800. It's something I only learned about. I grew up in the 90s with 6800 stuff, like Super Nintendos, Mega Drives. I love the arcades. I've Neo Geos, and I've always been, you know, I've got a collection of all those things at home. Video games I absolutely love. But about five, six years ago, I heard about the Sharp X6800 for, for the first time somehow, because it, it laid back as a long way. For what I found out is that in Japan in 1987, Sharp released this machine called the X6800, which was, uh, and at the time it released for 369,000 yen, mm -hmm. which in today's money is about $6,000. So it was a PC, and the primary point of this PC was for playing games. It literally <laughs> replicated the hardware that was available in arcade machines at the time. So in the same year that the Commodore Amiga came out in Europe, this machine came out in Japan with wildly, like, with specs that were wildly above it. It has some of the best ports that are available, uh, that have ever been done for any system. Some are just literally one-to-one -one conversions from the arcade hardware and actual original assembler code. And so I brought it in today's show off. Mine I purchased from Yahoo Japan about four years ago after searching around and waiting to get a good deal. Uh, I did, and what turned up was a big grey hunk, which looked fantastic, but didn't do anything. So, uh, solder's uh, junk, as they call it. Solder's junk, yeah, yeah, yeah. solder's junk. So it didn't it turn on. Didn't turn on at all. Yeah. And luckily, the, uh, I knew from reading up, there's a great uh, forum called GamesX, and they have probably the definitive information on the X1600, mm -hmm. at least for the West. Obviously, there's a lot of information in Japanese as well, so you can search around and Google Translate as your friend mm -hmm. when it comes to that. So the one I purchased, completely non-functional. I knew in advance that the power supply would probably be dead. So, and not to use it, so I didn't even try to power it on. Obviously, 110 volt supply as well, so you need to use a, a step down converter. Uh, but there was plans online already for building replacement PSUs using a Pico PSU. So I set about, I did that. There's also a suicide battery on the motherboard, which had to be removed. <laughs> so right next to the crystal as well. It's wonderful. Leaks. Electrolyte so, everywhere. And uh, fortunately, this one wasn't too bad, but there is horror stories, especially on this uh, this model of the X6. You know, there's about three or four different models. So this one's not particularly bad for capacitors, but it can be bad for the battery. But when you get the new, there's a version called the Compact, which is surface mount capacitors, and they're just pretty much most of them are dead now because the so the. Let me introduce you to Apple and Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. They use the same wire. Yeah, I think they use the same supply. So mine, I posted it, I replaced the power supply, sorted out the battery, and and then had to and I recap the entire motherboard, all three of them. They're in the system. There's wow. about yeah, there's about a hundred or so capacitors that needed to be uh, replaced. But fortunately, I bought an existing kit to that we had it on, so I didn't have to search that around for too long. Uh, yeah, it has what's called a SASE interface, which is the precursor to SCSI. So, but fortunately, it's SCSI compa backwards compatible. Nice. So, with a there's a someone released a hack which allows you to boot off the off an external SCSI drive. So, I've got my SCSI to SD hooked up in this one. <laughs> one of the other cool things is as well that it's a lot of the games support MIDI, so wow. you can get really good uh, sound awesome. out of the MIDI card. So, I've got an extra MIDI card that's in there as well. Mm -hmm. it supports up to twelve megabytes of RAM, but mine's got. Uh, yeah, so when it came out, it, it came with one megabyte on board, and you can add an extra one megabyte through an internal expansion, and then there's a separate expansion card, cards you can get, which allow you to get, add up to an extra 10 meg on. Wow. So mine's got, mine's got 10 meg, because I've got a one meg internal and a eight meg on a, on a separate expansion card. And yeah, uh, what's it like? So floppy disks? Floppy disks, it uses two five and a quarter inch uh, HD floppies. Nice. So they put up to 1.2 meg on each disk. And it's rare, I've brought some examples of the actual games and the boxes that were released as well. Because especially, I was used to Japanese imports and everything like from my console days, but it's really, really strange seeing the that sort of quality of cartridge label on floppy disks. Oh. It just it just seems like the fake, but the, so I brought some loads and shit. What CPU clock speed is it? It's 10 megahertz, oh, so, pretty so, high as well. So normally they run at eight, is this a difference at eight sixty eight thousand? 
No, it's the it's the same one. It's just clocked to run it ah. because the the quality of the components around it allow it to run at ah. that, that need, speed. Does, Whereas, it need, does it need heating? Uh, no. Oh, so it doesn't. So the only fan in it is a uh, on the power supply has a fan. Okay. It's not really needed, but I replace mine with an Octua anyway. Okay. An Octua everything. <laughs> What's, your, uh, <laughs> What's your OS on it? Uh, the OS is one that Sharp released called uh, Human OS. Is it the JOS? Japanese version? It's a Japanese version. It's like a Japanese like yeah. DOS. So it's DOS like. There's also a windowing environment called LEHS. It's a, like a file sharing thing that allows you to boot games and everything from it. So it works with a cool little boot menu. For the keyboard yeah, as well, it uses its own proprietary keyboard. They're, to buy an actual one, they're horribly expensive. It's like you're paying four, five hundred dollars for the keyboard. So I bought an expansion, uh, an adapter for a PS2 keyboard. To then find out, we also needed a Japanese PS2 keyboard because to be able to switch it into English characters. So that's what I've got there. It uses uh, joysticks that are compatible with the FM Towns. So and. Yeah, a bunch of other Japanese systems that the, the previous generation used like the same nine, controllers. Nine pin plug? Not, it's a nine pin plug, yeah, okay. but it's the FM, but it's not compatible directly with a Mega Drive or any of the Western stuff. Of course it's not. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but there are adapters to be able to make you do that and everything, and it will support the, there's, there's a four button controller and a six button controller as well, because it has perfect ports of Street Fighter 2 and yeah. also a bunch of Neo Geo games. So. But it's the FM Town compatible, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so you can use any FM Town's yeah. controllers in it as well. They're rare as hands. They are. I've got, I've got a few of them. Yeah. Cool. Because I have an FM Towns as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a good one for next talk. Yeah, I'll bring that in next time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's it. So Very please good. come and play yeah. and enjoy it. Any questions? I know far more about them than I should do. Excellent. What's the video output signal? Is it compatible with anything else? Oh, the video output. Yeah. So it's uh, TriSync. So it goes horizontal, in, vertical, and what? X dimension? Yeah, it does 15, <laughs> 20 24, 24 oh. and. Um, and 30 to 31 kilohertz wow. output, so you need a tricing monitor. But to be is able it to like 15 it. pin, 15 pin high density? It's a 15 pin uh, Japanese uh, RGB, which, which, which is the same as the which is the same as the FN Downs and everything. Uh, also, as well, the Japanese have some. This one doesn't, but the anything that's past SCSI one, they use their own type of SCSI connectors. So I've got some crazy because <laughs> of my expansion card also has a SCSI slot on it as well. Mm. So I've got these an adapter which goes to a male female thing to a giant <laughs> cable. Is it like a HDI connector or is it like I'll show you it. Yeah okay. it's like a high density because you but it has pins as Square, opposed to right? flat. Yeah it's but it's tiny like this size. I'll, yeah I'll yeah it'd be HDI 30. Yeah. Okay. But the, but it's a Japanese version. It's not the one you can buy out here in the West. Mm, okay. You can only get them in Japan. Oh I'll <laughs> <laughs> They, they might have them on Max, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they did. What's the actual video processor? It, it's its own custom oh, chipset, right. which is based yeah. off uh, arcade hardware at the time. Right. But they, they, the, the legend is that uh, Capcom actually coded Street Fighter 2 and a bunch of its arcade hardware on the on the 6800. Because nice. it was so similar to their CBS1 arcade hardware. So, yeah. Probably cheaper. Pro probably. Mm. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheaper than making their own hardware yeah. to, to play it. I think PowerBooks have that kind of chip made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll check it out. Okay. Very good. Thanks, well, Mark. Thank you. Thank you.